he failed the hearing test like three times. In that instant, I was very sad that all the times I'd been talking to him before he was born and in the three weeks he'd been here, you know, he, he'd never heard me. We couldn't figure out why. You know, there's no, there is no why, there's no reason. We don't know, it doesn't run in the family. So we were, we were pretty devastated, pretty hurt. It was a dark day. I didn't know what options there were. I didn't have a clue to what could be done for him. There is no doubt that the new diagnosis of a hearing loss in a baby can be devastating for a family. I understand that. And as a mother and a physician, I believe my role is not only to help these parents get through it from a medical standpoint, but really to help them get through it from an emotional standpoint. Uh, that's really the joy and the passion for me in what I do. My role is to make sure that they understand that we're there for them and that they're surrounded by a team that is going to help them through this journey. I didn't know what to expect, but uh, walking in the door, everybody was very helpful, welcoming. It's very hard to walk in there, and everybody there knows that it's hard and that we don't want to be there because we don't want to think that anything's wrong with our child. So to walk in there and feel like it was so welcoming and, and they were empathetic and they got it and made it easier, way easier. I'm there to reassure them that we're going to get through this together, step by step, but we're going to get through it. Dr. Suskind came out and she's like, oh, hi, I'm kind of running around right now, but I just went, oh, look at him, he's beautiful. To have the doctor greet us that way was really, I think, all either of us needed. As soon as she did that, I was like, okay, I'm good with this, this is good. So we knew when we had problems with Jack that it was like, this is where we need to go be because they're gonna take care of his problems and they're gonna help us along and make sure we're getting the best care possible for him. The first thing I tell them is that we, our team, are now their extended family. That we are going to take them and be with them through this whole journey. And I want them to rely on us for that support. Having a multidisciplinary team that involves the social worker, the audiologist, speech pathologist, myself, everybody involved really allows us to have a full picture of the child. We like to do a lot of testing with the hearing aid. You know, here's where you're he the child's hearing without the hearing aids, and with the hearing aids, here's where we are. Are they getting enough benefit? Do we need to adjust them, or do we need to move to the cochlear implant? Is that the next step? We had him evaluated for cochlear implantation, and he received his first implant when he was one. <laughs> the thought of my kid having to be sedated and having surgery and then having to recover from surgery and being very young completely freaks me out. And so walking into a hospital that was so inviting and made me feel, me feel very safe, I knew that if I felt that way, I could help my son feel that way. Comer Children's Hospital is such a unique environment for children and families. It's bright and colorful, you walk through the doors and it's instantly an environment that captures kids and families. It doesn't look like a hospital, it doesn't smell or feel like a hospital. It's full of artwork, creativity, color. I think that that in and of itself just creates a whole different mood and really reduces anxiety. 
It's inviting, it's playful, it does not look like a hospital. There's a whole area for teens that the little kids can't go into with games and stuff. So we went down there and sure enough we picked up a Scrabble game and we brought it back up to the rooms. It's just an opportunity for kids to be kids and that's how they grow, that's how they heal, that's how they get better. As the deaf educator on the team, I find that parents may leave the office thinking, okay, I've got all the information that I need, and they get home and they just have that one last question. There's no doubt that good communication is the key to good care. No question is too small or too insignificant. Um, you know, we're here for anything. And I think the families um, understand that, and I, I feel like that's what gives us a really good relationship, too. Yeah, they have email, phone numbers, both of us at the same time. You know, we're always handing out two cards at every appointment. So to just to have that accessibility has been amazing. It's like, it's not like dealing with a doctor at all. It's just like dealing with a friend. You have a question and they email you back. I like to remind parents that the implantation is only the beginning of the journey. Uh, it is sort of the, the, their hearing birthday, as we call it. I looked at it as I had a job. I had to try and make the best decisions for him because he couldn't make the decisions for himself because he was too young. We need to have a team of people behind us, with us, working with us, to get the best possible things for him. Everyone is so caring and so involved in your child's life. I know that they want the best for Blake, just like me. It seems like everybody's like a big, happy family. The University of Chicago is where we're going to actually get that opportunity to uh, give him the future that we would like to see him have. When I see a child that I haven't seen in a while and they're talking or they're communicating. It makes me feel like I was part of something great.